This is a video on how to replace the distributor on a Heister S50C using a Continental F163 engine. Uh, this is a 1962 Heister uh, S50C. Uh, it's an excellent machine, runs great. Uh, this machine has the famous Continental industrial engine, the F163, uh, which is famous for being used on the SA200 uh, engine driven welders. Um, the process for replacing the distributor uh, on this machine is similar to that on uh, SA200 machines. So you can look up some videos uh, from uh, welding uh, maintenance shops uh, on how to replace the distributor on the SA200 for uh, similar information. Um, Specifically here, I was having a problem with uh, the engine stalling uh, whenever the hydraulics would go to an extreme uh, length, basically when they would bottom out, or when I would uh, turn the wheel all the way to one side. Uh, replacing the distributor has solved that problem. Uh, the thing to keep in mind with replacing the distributor uh, is that uh, you are replacing one type of system with another. Um, the uh, points ignition system that originally came with this engine is obsolete. Uh, it requires uh, very significant maintenance and is very expensive to maintain, so it's a very good idea uh, and it's generally recommended to replace that with an electronic uh, ignition system uh, like the one I have here. The thing you need to bear in mind is that um, it's a much better idea to just replace the entire ignition system, including the coil, uh, the plug wires, and the distributor um, instead of just trying to, to replace the distributor and realizing that your system's out of spec. Specifically, uh, this is a Petronix distributor. I was told by Petronix first that I needed a, uh, a coil uh, with a um, resistance under 3 ohms. Mine was above 3 ohms. This is my original coil. Uh, so I bought a new coil from Petronix. Uh, I was also told that I need EFI suppression plug wires. Um, which I didn't have originally, so uh, I got those. Um, the best thing to do if you want to get a Petronix distributor is to call Petronix, get all of the part numbers, get the part number for the coil, get the part num number for the uh, plug wires, and obviously for the, the distributor. Uh, in order to remove the distributor, um, they recommend that you remove the distributor cap. Uh, obviously this is uh, cap removed. You need to see where this rotor was, mark the position. They recommend uh, leaving it on uh, on cylinder number one. Uh, cylinder one is here. Um, I did that. I moved it on cylinder one and tried to arrange it uh, based on that arrangement. Uh, but really, it ended up being a waste of time because uh, I just needed to rotate the distributor uh, until the thing would fire up. Um, so really, in my case, I didn't really need to mark it, uh, but Petronix recommends that you put uh, the uh, rotor on cylinder one, which is, in this case, would be pointing over here. Cylinder one is the one closest to the fan, uh, and that goes to this uh, plug wire right here. So what you do, uh, first off, you replace the coil. Uh, these are, use a 3 8 uh, ratchet, a wrench uh, to remove uh, these nuts, replace the coil, replace the plug wires. In this case, I had to cut the plug wires to length and crimp them. Uh, don't make my mistake, get a, get a specialized crimping tool. I did it some with some, uh, some pliers and really that's not a good idea. Just spend some money to get the crimping tool. Um, in order to remove the original distributor, uh, first you take a 9 16th socket, use the uh, 12 point side of the the uh, wrench and uh, unscrew it here. Once you get that nut off, you take this hold down right here and you remove the hold down at the same time as the distributor. So you pull the distributor straight up. Pull, pull up the distributor and the hold down and the distributor will, will come out like this. Uh, when that happens, you'll notice that the uh, old distributor uh, is much longer than the new distributor. Uh, that's because you will need a extension um, for your distributor. 
I'll put the part number uh, in the description. So, but basically the extension goes from about here to here. Uh, it's machine, it's got the slot uh, that goes into the distributor at the top. So you just drop the extension down over in, into this uh, hole here. Uh, so it connects to the oil pump and then you drop the distributor down uh, into the, uh, the hole on top of the uh, extender. Uh, and uh, that will mate and uh, the rotor inside the distributor uh, will s be stuck at one location uh, wherever basically the oil pump was pointing. In my case, it was pointing to uh, cylinder one, so it was just pointing in, in this direction. So once you do that, uh, you want to tighten down uh, the retaining nut over here. Uh, so tighten that down up to the point where just right over here sorry about that so you tighten that down up to the point where uh, you can barely move the distributor but you can move it somewhat so you want it tight because it is the primary ground uh, but you want to be able to move the distributor then you uh, start up the machine uh, and more than likely it won't start so what you do is you just hold your ignition, keep the starter going until you hear some spark. In my case, I had to rotate it close to 180 degrees. I was freaking out because at first I was wanted to rotate it only about 15 degrees either side and the machine wasn't starting. Uh, I had to rotate it 180 degrees. So if you're having problems with your machine starting, just rotate it com a complete 360 degrees until it starts. Uh, I got some spark and then I, I uh, uh, got it set. Uh, right in the middle where the machine seemed to run the best. So I would turn it to one extreme and, would, and the cylinders would start to slow down a little bit. Uh, turned it to another stream and slow down. And then I got it set in the middle. Uh, then I just tightened down uh, that bolt with the 9 sixteenths and it runs fine. Um, so again, just make sure you get all of the parts that you need. You need the coil, uh, you need the distributor, you need the plug wires, you, ne you need the extension uh, for the distributor to connect it to the oil pump. Uh, I will put all of the parts that I used uh, in this repair uh, in the description, uh, but do yourself a favor, contact Protronics, give them uh, your engine serial number uh, and uh, model number, uh, and they'll give you all of the parts and you can order them online, uh, and it should be a fairly easy process. Good luck. One last thing I forgot to mention. Uh, the exact dimensions of the distributor uh, are not the same in many respects uh, between the old one and the new one. Um, specifically, this bore right here is correct, uh, but this area for the hold down is different. Uh, so I had to take a die grinder. When you get an electronic distributor, uh, the old uh, distributor was only connected on one pole. I forget whether it was on the positive or negative. I believe it was on the positive. Uh, the new distributor will be connected to the coil both on the positive here and on the negative. Uh, obviously red, positive, it's labeled here. Uh, black is negative. Uh, do not make the mistake of crossing the wires that will destroy your distributor. And again, make absolutely sure that you use suppression uh, wires with these distributors, EFI suppression wires. Call Protronics, get them spec'd out if you're not sure. Don't risk it. Just get all new parts, uh, put them in. It's not very expensive and it'll save you a headache.